lovely people out there, this is Kevin from CC Pipe here, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. And in this video, I'll be breaking down paragraph styles in InDesign and we'll go through the many options available to you. But first, let's talk briefly about why we use paragraph styles. And if you just want to jump straight in, you can use the chapters. But basically, we use paragraph styles to allow us making changes to our text without having to select anything and do manual formatting, which can be both tedious and potentially lead to us missing something. And it also helps us to stay consistent. And I don't think everything needs a style. Some manual formatting can be perfectly fine, but I do think every InDesign user should probably learn how to use paragraph styles. So let's jump into InDesign. You'll find a panel under Window and then Styles. And here's where you'll be able to manage and apply all the paragraph styles you created. And to create one, simply click the plus here or go to the options and uh, choose New Paragraph Style. There are also some panel options, as you can see, but we won't look at that in this video. But since I mentioned it, two things I do find useful in here are the select unused and also load styles if you want to bring in styles from a different document. To apply the style, simply select an entire frame or place your cursor within a paragraph, which will only apply it to that paragraph alone. And uh, now it's applied, so let's double click on it and start looking at all the options. We'll go through this from top to bottom and there's so many options and I don't want the video to be an hour long, so I won't explain every single button. But once again, if you're interested in a specific tab here, I'll try and split it up into chapters and also I want to check the preview box in the bottom left so we can see changes live. We can of course name our style, very recommended. Then next we can base it on another and uh, I have a video about this that I will put on screen. But basically the style inherits properties from another one, allowing you to change things like the font for multiple styles at once. And next style is good for templates and object styles. And you select what style should be used next and when typing it will switch to the next after you press enter. And you can see how that works on screen right now. And shortcuts allow you to apply styles quickly. You need a numpad keyboard for this and you simply place your cursor in here and press Control plus the desired numpad number. And lastly you have a summary of all the changes that you made from the base. So pressing reset will reset to whatever it is based on, i.e. what you have selected over here. In here we have all the fundamental type options, the font, font style, size and the leading and tracking which is global spacing between letters and you can see what happens to the text when I change it. And considering readability, high values are mostly for headings. And we can also force caps or small caps and also sub or superscript. And doing it this way allows you to keep the original case and it's easy to change it back. Over here you can scale the type. And I rarely use this for paragraph styles, but I find it useful in character styles when you want to just scale a couple of words. And uh, baseline shift shifts the type up or down, and I don't really use skew. And language, as far as I'm aware, useful for hyphenations, and I imagine for autocorrect features, which I don't really use either. But you can set up language in here. Indents and spacing is indeed mostly what's in here, but also text alignment, which you select over here. And the rest mostly just adds space in different directions. So space before and after is between paragraphs, so it's not the same as leading, which is spacing between every row. And you can see how the text changes. And align to grid enables the baseline grid, which you, your type will then be locked onto. And this is used for ensuring aligned columns and video on screen once again. Tabs are easy, just click above the ruler and add a tab. And with the tab selected, switch alignment uh, with these buttons over here. And in here you can move the tab with a specific value if you want to be precise. And in the leader box you can type in a character, usually punctuation, and you can see what that does. With these you can put lines or a border around a paragraph and mostly useful when you need everything in line in one text frame. So for this I'm going to create a copy of this style. Just right click and duplicate and then I'll apply it to just the first paragraph here. And now we can double click and go back to the settings. So rules puts a line above or below the paragraph. 
So select which one you want and then activate it over here. And there's also plenty of options for customizing the rule with color, different line types, and you can offset it, etc. And then we have the paragraph border. And you can turn it on here. And then once again, you have tons of settings for customizing the appearance a similar way. And also the offset for the border, which is very nice. And now you can see why I made a separate style, because now we have a nice little border around just this first paragraph. Shading works the same way as the border, but instead gives you shading behind the paragraph. And the same thing over here, you can customize the appearance to your liking. So instead of a border, we could have a box. And uh, now I'm also going to switch back to our original style. I don't really use keep options, so I had to look this up when making this video, but you can use them to prevent orphans or widows in your text. And if you don't know what that is, it means single lines at the start or end of a text column, which is traditionally seen in typography as a thing to avoid. So up here we have a widow, and the last line of the paragraph ends up alone over here. So if we select keep lines together, we can see that InDesign fixed this. And uh, I might consider looking more into keep options and making a separate tutorial about this in the future. I mostly use this to turn hyphenations on or off with this toggle right here. But there are also settings here where you can try and fine tune when words should be hyphenated. For example, the minimum word length. Justification can be used when you have type set to justified, i.e. if we go to indent and spacing again and select left justify. And now you can fine tune spacing under justification if you're not happy with how the type looks. And uh, I'm no expert at this, so I'll leave it here. But if I needed to use it, I would probably just experiment with the numbers and seeing if I can make the text look better. In here, you can either override columns or make columns using the style. So span columns means just that. The paragraph will span over the columns in the text frame, which you select here. And as you can see, it now ignores the columns. And I basically use it for headings when you want everything in the same text frame. Split columns, on the other hand, creates additional columns for you. And here we have two set up in the box, but now with some columns, we have four. So personally, I set up columns in the text frame, but the feature is there if you need it. First, we have drop caps, which is when you make usually the first letter of a paragraph larger. So if we set this up with two lines and then one character, you can see what happens. And nested styles and line styles are really something quite different. With nested styles, you can apply formatting to the first word of a paragraph to give a reader a visual entry. And uh, you would click new nested style and we choose a character style to apply and then how many words it should apply to. And you need to click outside to see the effect. And line styles work in a similar way, but for rows instead of words. So let's say you want the first row to be bolded. So we then click on new line style, and then we choose one line, and then it looks like this. Under grep styles, you can make conditional formatting using character styles, and you select the desired character style and then type or insert from the menu what you want to target. And this, for example, in grep, uh, which is the default, means any digit, meaning all numbers will get that style. And if you want to learn more about grep, you can check out this video. This is where you set up lists, and you choose bullets or numbers, of course. And for bullets, you can change the glyph used as a bullet. And then clicking here, you can add more glyphs as well. And usually you use a tab as a separator, but you can change it. And you can also apply a character style to the bullet. So maybe you want it in another color, for example. For numbers, on the other hand, you can choose the type from the list here in the same way. And then we have a character style that can be used. And if you want to dive deeper into advanced lists, uh, you can check out this video as well. And at the bottom, you simply set up indents. So most of the time, it's going to be left aligned and then start with deciding the tab position. And next, set left indent to the same value. And lastly, the first line indent to negative that value. And now you have an aligned indented list. 
Character color is very straightforward, simply the color of your text, and you can also set the tint of the color. And the grayed out options here are for strokes, which you probably really should be using for text. I must admit I haven't emerged myself much in open type features, but in here I believe you can turn on or off font alternatives and access various open type features, providing you're using an open type font. And I put a link in the description with a short text about open type for anyone who wants to learn more. Next we have underline and strike through, which do just what they say. And you activate it here, and then we set the weight, and perhaps offset and then a color, and we really have the exact same options for both. And finally, the last tab, export tagging, which is another one I don't think I ever used. As far as I'm aware, it's used for accessibility. So you assign appropriate HTML tag to the paragraph style, embedding that information when you export as a PDF, HTML or EPUB, for example. And if this is the body text, you'd assign it P for paragraph. However, this doesn't affect anything for print and doesn't change anything visually. Okay, that was a lot. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to set up paragraph styles and thank you for watching and see you in the next video right here on Suzy Pipe.